Currently, cannabis is illegal in all circumstances in the United States. It's a Schedule One substance, and according to the feds, uh, using it, selling it, producing it, processing it is against the law. We have a kind of split system at the moment where various states have taken action at the state level that the federal government declined to prosecute. Various Congress people from various states, oftentimes Oregon, Washington, and Colorado, have over the years proposed that the federal restrictions should be eliminated, cannabis should be rescheduled. Uh, that has not met with overall approval, however, but that didn't stop them from trying. A substance is deemed a Schedule One substance if it meets a three-part test. That is first, uh, it has no medical use at all. Second, it is not approved to be, to be used safely in any medical procedure or for any medical purpose in the United States. And it is deemed to have a high potential for abuse or misuse. If a substance meets these criteria, um, FDA and DEA are to inform the Attorney General that that substance should be a Schedule One substance. Now we come to cannabis. The abuse potential is actually quite high. It's uh, surprisingly dependent producing or addictive producing for the individual who takes it, and most consequential for cannabis is there is as yet no known therapeutic value where it has been adjudged by the Food and Drug Administration through careful clinical trials to have a known effect that is therapeutic and beneficial that might outweigh these other risks. So it fails on those criteria and as such is appropriately placed in Schedule 1. This is a substance that is used by millions of Americans every day. Uh, this is a substance that doctors see as having medical benefits for their patients for a variety of conditions. These are real conditions and these are relationships between doctors and patients uh, that are telling doctors that the benefits are real. It is important then to get government out of the business of blocking that type of medical research and blocking patients from getting the relief that they need. Very often the argument is, well, the government has suppressed research and not enabled people to get access to cannabis because they make it so difficult to get control. This is not an altogether fair argument. As a matter of fact, it's somewhat of a misleading argument. The government has currently 300 and some cannabis trials going on under NIDA, the National Institute of Drug Abuse. What we don't have, however, is gold standard medical research around the question of what types of conditions cannabis can help treat what doses of cannabis, what types of cannabis products can help alleviate the symptoms or help cure certain diseases. And so individuals throughout the United States are self-medicating. The difficulty isn't that the government doesn't want you to do that and therefore withholds the cannabis. It's that the research on the clinical value therapeutic benefit of cannabis is extremely, devilishly challenging to pull off. You can't do a placebo-controlled double-blind because people darn well know, being cannabis experienced, whether they're getting THC intoxicant or not. There is no legitimate basis for believing that cannabis should be left as a Schedule I substance. Schedule I substances include heroin and ecstasy. Schedule II substances include things like opioids and cocaine. Why? Because opioids and cocaine have medical benefits. Uh, we know that cannabis-derived substances uh, can have medical benefits. FDA has already approved a cannabis-based medicine. The only thing that leaving cannabis as a Schedule I substance does is makes it harder for researchers to get to the answers that they want and that the public wants. A lot of misleading information and claims and promises have been made about the purported medical value of cannabis or the value to society of liberating us from outdated and oppressive drug control laws. Basically, it's the science of what we know at the moment. That is, until it demonstrates and is demonstrable to medical evaluation that the three criteria of safety, therapeutic value, and low abuse potential have been addressed, you're not going to reschedule a drug from the condition of one to any other schedule until it meets those criteria.
A lot of individuals in the United States believe that uh, cannabis should be descheduled entirely. They say that uh, there is a freedom that exists in this country for individuals to make choices over the substances that they put in their own bodies. I think one of the most convincing reasons to deschedule cannabis and set up a federal regulatory system in its place um, is that there is a reality in the United States that cannabis is moving in the direction of legality. The federal government is best positioned and really the only institution positioned to create that consistency at the state level. And they can only really do that through descheduling. How, for instance, would you abide by the international controls? The signatories to the treaties, the 1961 uh, uh, treaty that we have with the United Nations. How would we stop cannabis from coming across the border from Canada or Mexico if this were descheduled and completely uncontrollable outside the federal system? My impression is that rescheduling cannabis is down to a simple calculation of uh, cost and benefit and any serious appraisal of the genuine costs to public health, criminal justice, international security versus the purported benefits is so overwhelmingly loaded for the costs of rescheduling that they should should occasion in us enormous caution.